I'm Holly Amaya from Story and Printing. I'm here with Anne Marie Hoftailing, my co founder. Hello. How are you? Hello. Um, I would love to talk today. We do all these storytelling tips on this channel because we are a company devoted to teaching great people and great humans the art and science of story. We have a series of storytelling tip videos, and one that I want to talk about today is, is kind of a fun, sexy one your monster story. Yeah. What, yeah, I don't know if it's fun. I, I would just mean it for the folks fun. at home, Anne Marie. Yeah, I don't think it's much fun. <laughs> so um at all, actually. Um, so my birthday was last week, and I as sort of a, you know, for people who either can't afford coaching or needed to process, I did a three-hour online session um that was open to anyone who wanted to attend to process issues. And there was a lot that came up about workplace toxicity, mm -hmm. um, working for absolute, you know, narcissists and bullies and monsters. Right. Um, I wrote a piece on it, uh, about it on LinkedIn. But I think that this is something that's really, really common. And I, I first want to say, you know, I'm not talking about somebody who's just a difficult person, right? right? We've all worked with people who are maybe not so warm, maybe a bit of a jerk. That's right. not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who are truly abusive or harmful. And I think that most people have a story either in their graduate, undergraduate experience, in a coaching capacity, perhaps, um, or a boss, or even like we have a lot of attorney clients, um, opposing counsel stories that are oh, shockingly yeah. abusive. And those stories are really valuable. And you may think, oh, when would I ever use this story? You don't have to name people, but I right. think that sharing those stories can be really vulnerable and can really help you build accelerated, accelerated trust with your audience. Right. In what context would you use this type, that type of story? I think there are lots of training contexts that you could use that story. I think if you're in a firm or you're in an organization, you can use it in a coaching context. Yeah. I think you can use it in a leadership context around change management, recruiting. Mm -hmm. I think you can use it in a keynote context. I think there are ways to think about how, like, what did these people teach you about yeah. how you didn't want to be in the world, who you didn't want to be in the world? That's really valuable. And also the impact you have on people. I mean, we're all super powerful. You know, we, the way we speak to people can be wildly destructive and harmful. And I think when you share what that experience was, it can be really powerful and make people more mindful. Did you find when you were in your coaching session that when these stories were coming out, like, because this was by Zoom, right? It was, it was a meeting so you could see people's faces. Like, how were people responding? It was incredibly right. emotional. Um, you know, people were crying. It was, I mean, I don't think, you know, one of the things I would just say is I think traumatic work environments are incredibly common. And I think there, we don't shed a lot of light on it. Right. I think we have all these weird things we do, like we say, oh, I worked for, you know, Joe Smith once and, you know, I survived, it toughened me up. Like we right. almost normalize trauma in the workplace as if it's somehow acceptable rather than sort of reaching this place where this is absolutely wrong. Right. And we have to find a way to stop this. And frankly, you know, I say this all the time, a lot of this behavior isn't legally actionable. People right. can be pretty terrible and destroy your career. And it's very hard to prove, frankly. Um, for those right. of you who don't know, Holly's husband is an employment attorney. Many of our clients are employment attorneys. Just because somebody is a horrific human being doesn't mean it's always legally actionable. And I would say, often it's very hard to prove. Did, would you disagree with that? Oh, no, I no, I totally agree. I mean, I think it's like, you know, um, people, people, I remember when I was practicing law on the plaintiff side, you know, client, potential clients come in and they talk to you about this terrible experience they've had. And you think like, yeah, but I can't make a, I can't make a connection to, you know, your status in a protected class, for example, or something like that. Right. So yes, that's terrible. And there's very little that we can do, you know, I do think that we live increasingly in this environment in which, you know, people are not really tolerating that anymore. Like they want, there's this need to talk about, you know, um, 
dysfunctional workplaces and like, you know, kind of shine some light on those types of um, toxic relationships, right? I mean, I don't, wouldn't you agree? I mean, I think there's more of a willingness to talk about it. No, <laughs> I disagree. I think that the younger generation is doing that. They yes. will go on Medium and post a blog. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, frankly, I mean, that's truly happening all the time. I right. think the tech industry is less tolerant. Yeah. Do I think professional services has changed? No. Yeah. Do I think most people are just increasing their tolerance? Yes. Do I think most of our clients are just increasing their tolerance? Yes. I don't see it as radically changing. I see that it's generational, that a younger generation is accepting mm -hmm. that less, but I still think there are pr plenty of toxic environments in tech, toxic right. environments everywhere. Sure. And so I don't think it's changed that radically. I think it's the needle has moved ever so slightly, but I think the preponderance of abuse that goes on and the way it diminishes people, I think is far greater than the amount of exposure it gets. What are some takeaways that you would have for folks like watching, you know, who kind of want to tap into this, want to use it, use, you know, their own experience uh, with the monstrous human at work, you know, to sort of for, for some good, like what, what can they do going forward? I think if, you know, when you reflect back about those experiences, one, by the way, it's very therapeutic to write these things out. There's a whole yeah. narrative therapy, um, area of therapy called narrative therapy. I also think it's useful to talk about it from a management leadership and team building tool. Talk about a previous experience. You don't have to name where it was or who it was, but talk about what, how working under someone like that changed you and yeah. diminished you. I mean, I, you know, I, I think that like, it's not like it's just a stressful work environment. People right. don't sleep. They gain weight. They lose weight. They have heart attacks. They medicate themselves. They go bald. They go blind. I mean, there are real physical expressions of this level of high sustained stress. Right. And I think when you take these stories and talk about how it impacted your relationships at home, right. how it impacted your sleep, the way you engaged with your family, your friends, I think it can illuminate how powerful you are when you're managing someone and why yeah. you have to be mindful and thoughtful of the impact you're making when you're speaking to someone with such disregard. Yeah. Well, if you, if this video has spoken to you in some way, drop a like, drop a comment. You can also reach out to us privately because we understand this is a very sensitive topic. Um, I am Holly at storyandprinting.com. and marie is AMH, A-M-H, and marie hoff -Taylor at uh, storyandprinting.com. And if there's something that you, you know, if you've looked around the channel and there's a topic that you haven't seen covered, please reach out to us. We make these videos in direct response to sort of our experience with clients in the world and in response to the needs that we observe or that they articulate to us. So uh, we would love to hear from you. And in the meantime, be good to one another. And Marie, have a wonderful day. You too, my friend.